Hey guys, it's Ryan, and today's video is going to be a little different than usual. I originally started this YouTube account after seeing the trailer for Hytale, and seeing what Hytale itself had to offer. And as a 3D artist and a games lecturer, I saw the opportunity to help teach people about 3D modelling, texturing, and animation with the added bonus that they'd be able to see, play and share their work with others. But as Hytale has yet to be released, I decided to cover some of the blog posts in the meantime. This will allow me to keep myself and players up to date with everything Hytale, but also give me a chance to grow my channel ready for Hytale to be released. So as some of you guys may know, Hytale showcase fan art on their website. You submit your fan art via their Twitter using the hashtag HytaleFanArt. I did just that and was completely taken back at how well it was received among the community, both Twitter and Reddit. It was liked, shared, upvoted, retweeted, and I even received praise from Hytale himself. And from that, I received multiple requests on how I created my fan art. So today I thought I'd take you through what it took to create the shield from Hytale's announcement trailer. This is not a tutorial, I could however make one in the future but this is more of a quick overview of the process. The first step I take is deciding what purpose does the model serve? Am I creating it for a game, a movie, or am I rendering it as a still image? For me, this is a really important step because it can drastically change the way I create my model. The next step is finding what it is I want to make. So in this case, it was the shield from Hytale's announcement trailer. I looked at other sources like their concept art and other media but I decided on the shield for my first piece. Now that I had something to work from, I would analyze it and try and figure out some of the specifications behind the design, like use, size, material, color, as well as any trouble areas I may run into. It's all to get a better idea of how I'm going to tackle this model. It's much easier to take a moment and at least get a rough idea of how you're going to create your model. After figuring out how I wanted to go about designing the shield, I took a screen grab and then moved into 3ds Max for modeling. Here we are in 3ds Max. First, I'd start off by bringing the screen grab into 3ds Max to use as reference. From there, I created a plane that would be the base of my shield. I then roughly traced the shape of the shield by moving the vertices of the plane. I wanted the curve to be a little smoother, so I added a turbo smooth modifier. From there, I selected all the front faces of the shield ready to add an inset. This would create the outer rim of our shield. Now I wanted to add some depth to our shield, so I added a shell modifier. I then reselected all the faces on the front of the shield, except this time I would deselect the outer edge. From there, I would extrude them in a negative direction so that the outer edge would appear to have thickness. The model wasn't quite smooth enough for me, so I decided to add another turbo smooth. Even though I'm not really making a shield for a game or anything, I still like to keep on top of the topology and poly count, so I decided to clean up the model a bit. Once I was happy with the structure, it was time to unwrap our UVs. UVs are two-dimensional texture coordinates that you create from your 3D geometry. Good UVs are critical to create a good texture for your model. For this, I use software known as Resom UV. First, I import my shield. I then decide on the best way to cut it, and after that, I pack it and it's ready for texturing. For this, I use Substance Painter. I'm not really going to go into this software too much because it's really about tweaking stuff until you're happy with the outcome. But basically, it has a bunch of starter materials that you can simply drag and drop onto your model. And from there, it's really about your creative choices and really familiarizing yourself with the software. However, after spending some time in Substance Painter, I export the textures and move on to the final stage. And for this, I use Marmoset Toolbag 3. This software will allow me to quickly light and render my model. I start by importing both my model and texture into the scene. And once I've set up all the materials correctly, I begin to tweak a few settings and set up the lighting for my final render. And there you have it. I know this was a quick run through and I apologize if the video seems a little rushed. I've not had much time to spend on it, but that's basically the process I went through to create the shield. If you liked this video and want me to do others like it, let me know. This is the kind of stuff I want to do in the future, but with Hytale's toolset. So if you think this might be useful to you, consider subscribing. However, that's it for now. See you around.